Yes. A wee bit of cloud cover so the amps are dropping up and down from 21, 22 amps. So I had a pretty big scare yesterday while running the steamer. It um, all the lights turned off, computer turned off, my FPOS machine made a beep, so that means that it was coming off charge. guys we're finally getting into doing this trailer project I've taken a little bit of time off dealing with the loss of my younger brother Nathan what I've since figured out is that this toolbox I was going to initially use for the inverter and the batteries isn't going to be big enough I tried putting these batteries in here and there's just not enough room safely to put the inverter in as well so i ended up biting the bullet and going with this big bad boy here now i'm in amongst mounting it at the moment probably won't show most of that i've already got two massive bolts in there and some other ones on the back of the cage now the idea is to mount all of the batteries that i have spare that are lithium in here and all the other little goodies that I've been accumulating for a little while. Okay, so we've completed the groundwork where all the batteries are hooked up. We're ready to start sticking in fuses and adding charging systems. All right, admittedly, I wanted to film a lot more of the process of this, but I was on a roll and did not want to stop. I just had the music going and off in my own little world, most of it is done. I haven't turned it on yet, haven't tested anything. At least you'll be here for that. We've got the 40 amp charger there, 240 volt charger that one. So wired in, everything's very rough at the moment. We've got the shunt there, we've got the massive switch. We've got our fuses and I took a bus bar out from in here and put in a 300 amp fuse for the main inverter. There is also another 400 amp fuse down here for the main battery bank and we've also got the MPPT up here. Probably half of it is not level, don't care. That's not the point of this build. It is just to get some energy out of these batteries after it originally was going to start with these batteries. These are the swollen cells. This one's actually about 10.7 centimeters wide. <laughs> I wonder what it will do to the actual capacity. And that was originally all I was going to use, but since my brother passed away, I grabbed the cells from his car. I still had these two fake 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Well, surprise, surprise, there, guys. Same as last time 53.2 amp hours there. So I thought may as well use them and give them a better home in here. So I've also stuck the power point down here. I've also got the inlet for the charger put in. I've also got a vent here. So that's going to be thermally controlled, this vent. In there, that will turn on and I'll set the temperature to 40 degrees. I've got a little thermal probe sitting in behind the inverter. I've taped it to the back of the inverter. So once it hits 40 degrees, those little fans will turn on and vent this whole area. So I've put this other charger on as well, which is another 20 amps going in. Top these batteries all the way up. I don't really have a way to test the solar yet. Yes.
There's a little fans pump. So another thing that I added was a big 175 amp Anderson plug up there. It directly goes to the inverter so that I can run tests from that inverter from other batteries if I really want to. So I can completely isolate this bank and test other batteries through that Anderson plug. First official big test for the system and I've already found one wire that's getting a little bit warmer than I would like. It does have a bit of a kink in it so I might change that wire tomorrow. See how we go but it's running the dryer no problems and that fridge have seen it spike up to 200 amps a couple of times. It's been running for about half an hour already and um, yeah only got one hot wire so for slapping everything together in a day it's done pretty well to be honest. Well it's 8.40 in the morning and we're getting 6 amps in and the sun hasn't even really touched the panels properly yet and they're saturated so should be interesting to see what it gets in full sun. It's doing quite well though. We're down at 146 amp hours or we're down 146 amp hours so We'll see what it can get back in, hey? We're at 62% battery power. Well, there we have it, the end of the day. It's five o'clock and the sun has already gone down, which is a bit annoying, but shorter days in winter. There you go, 87% and only 51 amp hours to go to fill the batteries. As you can see, we've got extension cords going everywhere for the time being. We'll turn this inverter on. So all that's going in. How much are we drawing? 44 amps. It's not that much at all. Follow the extension lead. It's powering this. And in here we got the noisy inverter going. 35 degrees so it's about what I guessed it was gonna get up to in here nice hot day I definitely think those fans will come in handy so running the dryer we've drawn 277 amp hours plus the standby power overnight we've got that battery charger running at the moment so we've got 31 amps in plus whatever's coming in from the solar so should charge up pretty quickly I would say all right the dryer has stopped and we're still pulling 50 ish amps from this system and it's at 87 percent can feel the heat the fan hasn't kicked in yet though 35 and a half. A wee bit of cloud cover so the amps are dropping up and down from 21, 22 amps. And the smart shunt says we're pushing in 51 amps, which is really good. So I had a pretty big scare yesterday while running the steamer. It um all the lights turned off, computer turned off, my FPOS machine made a beep, so that means that it was coming off charge. And I went, went outside and I'll show you what I found. So those of you with keen eyes will see that I had to bypass the switch. Like I said earlier, that uh, main wire was getting too hot. Now admittedly, when I opened this up to see what was going on, there was smoke pouring out of it. And I freaked out and I honestly thought the inverter was cooked. I thought that's what the problem was. Sorry, Kings. <laughs> but I went through, did some diagnosing and bridged the wires over here. And sure enough, it was just this switch. Now, when I went to Springer Solar to get that switch, they said it was up to 48 volts at 300 amps. Now, I definitely don't think it should have that. It's a Victron Energy switch it shouldn't say up to it should say 
48 volts at 300 amps. So I've got to find another switch and stick that in there. But for now, I've bridged that main wire and that's what's running the inverter at the moment. Now, I know some of you in the comments will be carrying on about how the BMSs should be and the cable should be and you can't stick different capacity batteries together well you can and there's the evidence of it all the cells are 3.304 all the cells are 3.3 uh, they're all over the shop for this one but 3.3 ish for that one they're both well this is the swollen cell battery as some of you would know that's the big swollen cell battery that's 257 ish amp hours this one is from Nathan's Ute the 200 amp hour battery both are very heavily used batteries basically and both their voltages uh, seem to be almost the exact exactly the same so the BMS's will handle everything they got the Mueller energy BMS's in there those Mueller energy um, BMS's actually have a balancer in there so the balancer I've turned on at 3.4 volts when they get up there they'll start balancing between the cells so yeah that's gonna handle everything that, that BMS will thanks for watching and as always like comment subscribe and let me know how I could have done it better thank you guys